you know, each week, Ryan, doing yeah. these gets really difficult. And it you, does. You don't offer anything. No, I don't. It's terrible. We need to really just face our troubles this week and address them. Like, like, okay, I know in the previous episode, I talked about the day nine challenge where I'm trying mm-hmm. to, the, whatever he calls it, the 30 yeah, day the 30 thing day, where you pick DK a project. 30, yeah. I'm trying to face my fears, if that I makes any sense. Sorry, I was literally was just playing Kingdom Hearts when I came here, so. <laughs> Good game. Um, hey, but, I'm stuck in Alice's Wonderland crap, fighting this stupid ass boss that throws fireballs wait, at me. Wait, hold on. Is this Kingdom Hearts 1? Yeah, I've started at the beginning, man. Dang. Okay, when you get to Kingdom Hearts 2 and you play a guy with bubbles and a guitar, let me know. Okay, that ends a while because I'm getting this fireball jackass has just crushed me and my girlfriend's over there just laughing at me. So I got stuck in the, the Alice in Wonderland area for a long time yeah, when I played Kingdom Hearts 1. Yeah, she said she did too, so. It's tough, but when you yeah, play the guy I'm talking game. about, let me know. It's a kid's game. It's kicking my ass, man. It's a middle school kid's game. Well, it's, it's, it was made during that time where games just didn't hold your hand, really, which is, I, yeah. I, I prefer that. I like that. So. Again, facing, facing your fears, Ryan. Yeah. You got to face them. Like, for anyway. me this week, I'm trying to make sure I get a routine set and I draw at least a little bit every day. That's and smart. Consistency. I'm, it's like my entire existence is afraid of consistency. I hate it. <laughs> Okay. I just want to do random shit all day and I don't want to have to think about, oh, I got to do this thing in X minutes. Well, why do you think you know? that is? I don't... Okay, we're getting too real here. This isn't... <laughs> we started up a is therapy this... session here for you. Did we turn this into... I'm not ready for that. What... What... Okay, so you, you've just been playing Kingdom Hearts, though. Uh, well, I... well, no. Uh, I haven't played it all in a while, but uh, we're actually... I don't know what happened. I think she said, I was with my girlfriend, I think she said face your fears or something. I don't know. But I guess that song was stuck in my head. Played it on my phone. I was like, you know what? I'm going to play some Kingdom Hearts until Braxton's ready to record. Nice. I was, so I was ready what, to record before you. Oh. Yeah, well, I was eating. So. Well, I mean, I, I've been progressing, pushing past my fears and drawing, not at a scheduled time. But, you know, I want to be able to make D&D stuff so I can, you know, draw the monsters that are going to be killing my friends in and my you can sessions make that I money do. and commission and get commissions and I don't know if I'd do that. I wouldn't be able to do any of the deadlines. Yeah, probably you can't follow through with it. Don't tell my boss. I mean, if it was simple enough, possibly. But Ryan, I'm just not ready to face my demons. Why is that? Well, I don't know, man. They're scary. Yeah, but they want a, they want power. You get a paladin in your party, and there you go. You got a light with you at all times. Is that all it takes? Well, it's more complicated than that. <laughs> okay, well, I feel like you might have some more information that I do not in this case. I do. So, uh, I've taken a few trips in my life. You know, we've talked about the planes. We've talked about yeah. the astral plane, and more specifically, or more broadly, I should say, just all the planes in general. Mm-hmm. Well, there's one place we slightly touched on uh, where the demons exist, the abyss. Yeah. Just, I mean, just the name itself, that sounds terrifying, right? Let's go mm-hmm. hang out at the Abyss. It's the so edgy you, bar. you tell me we're going to go to the fancy Abyss bar and get some dank, dank drinks? Yeah, today? you just got to be very careful uh, on all the patrons there. It is not a nice place. It's terrifying. Can I touch them? Uh, sure. Some of them are a little, little goopy, but you can touch them. I don't like goopy. I might keep my hands on the, off of the goopy ones. Okay. Are there any furry ones? It's like a, yeah, there's actually a lot of furry ones. He's also <laughs> probably good. the best looking dude to ever exist. You know Goo? No, 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 no. He's nine feet tall. Looks like a. Uh, he's got a. His six pack has a six pack. He's a good Damn. looking fella. So today's the day? Today's the day. Well, okay, so. Oh, okay. I just want to say we are going to be mm-hmm. talking about demons and the abyss, yeah. but. Not really. We're not going to delve into the intricacies of the abyss because that's way too much to do. There's infinite layers within this place, so that might be a bit much. I feel like that's just a convenient excuse to not have to narrow it down. Yeah. Uh, we're also not going to be talking about demons at, on a broad term. We're going to be talking about specifically the demon lords, the demon princes. All right. So, I mean, when it comes to, to demons for me, Again, my big reference is anime and video games. Uh-huh. So I think we're going to have a lot of 
me being like, so wait, you mean that I can't get a cute anime demon partner and put her in a box and she's also my sister type of situation? No, I don't think you could do that. These type of demons would not enjoy that. No demon slayer? No, no, no. These are these are chaotic, insane demons. I don't know, man. You got to have it in your heart. But th- but this week, as you've as you have now found out, with probably this one of our best transitions ever, we're going <laughs> demons. Yeah, <laughs> he's Ryan. He's Braxton. This is the dungeon crawl. Let's let's crawl through that abyss. Strap in that, on in that dark hole. Make sure your backpack straps are on tight. This better be as cool as Dark Souls. Cast your light spells. We're going in, fellas. Mm. I feel like there's probably some demons that are not strong against light, but it doesn't fuck them up. No, yeah. Well, are there? I don't know. Maybe. Mm. I'm gonna. You should, I mean, I'm not gonna commit to any answers. There. Okay. <laughs> well, I need those answers. So, and Braxton brought up a good point before we started recording. There is a very distinct difference between devils and demons. Mm-hmm. The devils you obviously reside in the nine hells, and the demons reside in the abyss, which is an infinite layer of crap and nastiness. And each each layer is ruled over by a different demon lord. And these are all, and it's important to say right now, while the, the devils have their arch devils and they have a sense of hierarchy and order. The demons, on the other hand, do not. So these titles are all self-proclaimed. There is no qualification. There is no order to this. It's just, hey, I'm a big, strong, buff dude, and I can kick your ass, so you should you should listen to me. I'm going to be the ruler of this layer. See, for those of you who are like me and your main exposure to demons has been anime, <laughs> from what I've gathered through my studying the language and watching anime, there seems to be a bit of non-clarification between demons and devils in the majority because the word akuma for demon also is translated by for devil interesting and they don't clarify it like at all most of the time but for shows like uh kimetsu no yaiba or demon slayer you can kind of get the idea that the the demons in that show are kind of similar to the ones that i think we'll be talking about today i know next to Nothing about the source material Ryan's going to be talking about, but he always mentions it. So, I mean, in that show, demons are mostly brutish and they're just absorbed with sure. power and getting stronger, except for like the main villain. Yeah, who just thinking. organizes a little bit. He's he seems little, he seems more devilly. He does seem more fiendish and devilly. Yeah. So I don't I don't know if there's just no clarification there or it's just the yokai in general that they're poking at. But um, I'm excited to see the stuff for D&D because it's a lot more separated and specific i am yeah. a little more interested in the devils for specific reasons but demons are always cooler because <laughs> he's a tiefling with... player yeah that's why Dem- demons are stronger yeah so the nasty the lack of order is specifically what separates demon princes from arch devils there's constant overthrow within the layers and there are some demon lords and princes that we'll cover today that in their past have been have lost their crown, if you will, for lack of a better word, have lost their crown of that layer and have had to win it back. So there's that sounds like a story I'd like to follow. Yeah, these guys are they're pretty badass. And the way specifically how you could use them in your game is granted, all the ones we're gonna talk about today do have stat blocks. Hmm. But you don't have to even include them specifically in the game. They all have cultists. We're gonna cover the cultists of each one as well. And that's specifically, I think, how, as a DM, you could utilize these guys in your game. I just realized I'm getting Google open. Oh, boy. So you I want to see these fuckers. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to briefly try to describe them, too. But definitely, if you if you are listening and have the capability, please look up some pictures of these guys. Because there's some really cool fan art and things that have been drawn of each of these bastards. I mean, you guys know me. The second I start seeing something that's really cool, I just want to talk about it for forever because i'm a visual learner <laughs> that's why i'm wanting to learn how to draw some stuff maybe one day i'll be able to draw you know goo do him proud oh, that'd be cute you draw like a Will cute make... little uh anime chibi yeah Inogu. that's what i was wondering would i make him like cute or would i just go full-on realistic and just get all the gore in his in his maw and beard and fur oh that'd be fun that's quite the image but my question for you ryan is yeah i mean you've got i think eight 
Uh, I believe about, that's correct. I mean, how would you go about, who would you bring up first? Which one, like, are you? would you pick your favorite, the weakest, the strongest? I was planning on just going alphabetical, but I could do my favorites first. Maybe, hmm. Should we, should we do favorites last? Hmm, I mean, I'll just say which one's my favorite. Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead. I don't know anything about them anyways. Well, I'll say it when we get to him. I'll, I'll hold. I don't want. I don't want to jump the gun here. You know, I don't want to go. Hey, you hey, sound like a demon yourself. A devil would have been like, "We're doing this and done." <laughs> You're going well, crazy. Yeah, I'm not writing contracts or anything here, man. I did that once for a player and never again. Because <laughs> contracts are hard. That is the perfect situation for them, though. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one player that probably couldn't have dealt with the contract that well. Oh, thank demons goodness. don't do that. Yeah, if it'd been any of you guys, you would have scrutinized that contract and never would have signed it. I think I think Daniel would have been the best or the, the strongest person against yeah. the contract. Yeah, my my player that had the contract, she just looked at it and was like, sure. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. I mean, I'm not gonna complain. So yeah, as I, I said, w- oh boy, the demon each layer is controlled by a demon lord. Now, if we were covering lords, we'd be here forever. Is that Whereas, many? Yeah, well, yeah, like I said, each layer, and the abyss is infinite. That's a problem, right? I so see you're going. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, there are lords that have risen higher than the others and have become more powerful, dubbing themselves princes. Those are who we're going to be talking about, the demon princes. Well, I guess before we get there, I wanted to talk about the layers a bit more because mm-hmm. whenever infinite comes up, I'm always like, okay, we don't live in an infinite world. My brain doesn't work that way. Is there like a prime layer or a capital so to speak um i mean not really because there is no leader of for example how the hells have the final layer uh the final the the nine the ninth level of hell is where asmodeus lives he's the guy that basically rules all of hell there isn't a spot like that in abyss in the abyss interesting and there are there are at least up to a Granted, they're kind of out of order and not every layer is covered, but there are places that you can find up to layers of like 665 that people have written out where each one is from coming back from lore and other books and stuff or from their own knowledge. I know this is probably more focused on the hells, but I mean, 666, come on, just write one more, (laughs) one more, just uh, see even doom says demonic presence. And it's yeah, from the hells. Did you finish a Doom Eternal? No, I need to get back to it. I might do it today or something. I don't know. But see, they say demonic presence. There's some mixing of the demons and hells. Yeah. There is some, I mean, there is some overlap. And Is it just D&D that kind of really, really separates them? Uh, Yeah, basically. I mean, depends on, obviously depends on where you look. If you're looking at religion, if you're looking at pop culture, some pop culture lore will say, you know, this and that. Other places will say there's a clear difference. Uh, I believe most religions have them together. It's, it's a wash, really. And to answer your question about, there is a 666th layer of the abyss. Uh, if I'm, if this page that I just found is correct. And this is where the Rusadin which is basically where the abyss is born out of is kept in prison. So that's, I guess that would kind of be the capital of, how, of uh, the abyss. So you want to learn about that. Yeah. That's for another, another podcast though. Another podcast. Keep listening. We have yeah, episode we could... continuity. So. <laughs> yeah. We could even cover if, the gods at some point. If unearth arcana is concerned, we have, we have oh, a no. series. We have consistent shows. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, there's actually been some new Unearthed Arcana stuff that maybe we'll talk about today, maybe not. Probably next episode. I haven't even heard about it, so you can tell me if you wanted to. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how we get with this demon. Let's, let's jump yeah, right yeah, into it. Let's, let's get started here. So, uh, the first one, at least alphabetically in order, is Baphomet. Oh, this, I know that one. Yeah, this, this guy, he's known as the Horned King, which you can already begin to imagine. He looks like a pretty large, beefy Minotaur dude. He also is believed to be the originator of minotaurs um he wears lots of big armor he's got a big axe big scary angry dude he rules the 600th layer of the abyss this layer is known as the endless maze because you know he's a minotaur he likes he likes labyrinths 
And uh, he basically, he, the reason why he loves labyrinths, though, is because he he studies every intricate detail of these labyrinths himself and just relishes and enjoys the horror and the pain that comes from people that get lost within, within these labyrinths. Is he and smart? We'll, yeah, he's very smart. He only attacks once they've lost the will to continue. Once the labyrinth has won and he has won his encounter, then he comes out and is like, you know, I'm going to eat you now. Well, see, now I've got some questions because, uh, at least specifically about running him in a campaign. Uh -huh. So you're a DM and maybe you've made um, this character or this, you've, you've put Baphomet in uh -huh. wh wherever you're going. You're in his maze. You're in the 600th layer. Yeah. Like, I really want my players to fight Baphomet. I've got this this miniature. It's actually fucking massive, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, he's considered would you, like, huge. Would you play into the he only attacks when they've lost the will to live? And would you force or railroad your players into losing their will? Or would you really just not have them show up if they didn't get to that point? Well, that's a good question, Braxton. Because you would only ever fight this guy if you're in his lair. In his oh. in the endless maze, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're within the abyss, there's already lots of mental stuff happening to you. Specifically, in each of these demon princes has their own madness table. So if you are within this guy's maze, in this guy's lair, you're going to be experiencing these madness effects. Um, some of them being the world is my hunting ground, others are my prey. Um, I degenerate into beastly behavior, seeming more like a wild animal than a thinking being. You get the idea. Yeah. So I, I would include other beasts, other things within this endless maze, and I might even just play him that he can just, you know, he'll, uh, appear out of nowhere, attack. You know, he's he's not a normal, especially in his domain, he's not a normal dude. This is his spot. Uh, one of his lair actions specifically is he can seal one doorway or other entryway within the lair. The opening must be unoccupied. It's filled with solid stone for one minute or until Baphomet creates this. So he could hop out of a doorway, attack somebody, jump back in, and then seal a doorway. See, he looks like a big brute dumb boy, but I guess he's kind of smart. Yeah, I mean, he has he even has a place called his, a temple of science. And this is where he creates and experiments with... Uh, different monsters and creatures like he creates demons inside this temple i mean hey you you D, D peeps out there looking for a significant other in game baphomet doesn't seem like he seems a pretty good choice he's got brains he's got strong he's got ideas sure. yeah he's his I, catch. I mean his ideal is to turn the multiverse into his personal hunting ground why that, wouldn't you want to be a part of that yeah if that seems up your alley i mean hey join him I mean, he's got some pecs on him. The, the image I'm looking at, man, he's just standing all stout mm -hmm. with his bloody glaive and these antlers. Yeah, he's looking pretty hot. Out. He might be a little big for you, but hey, we all bite off a little more than we can chew. I like his, him. His axe is called to. Heart Cleaver. See, now that, like, I know that seems like he's going to cleave your heart out, but that's just bit. for the people that try to alter your relationship or hurt oh, you, okay. you know? He'll protect you. He's with me to the end, right? After probably torturing you. Maybe you're uh, also into that. It, yeah, I mean, if that's what you're into. Did you want to get more into his stat block? Uh, well, we're not covering them. If we did that for everyone, we'll probably be here forever. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'd get too far into it. Uh, yeah, if we're, we're not covering, like when we did the Null episode, we did a whole lot on Yinogu. We're not really covering... Yeah, you know, we're not really covering him in a whole podcast. 30 strength, 28 calm. Yeah. I mean, all these guys are real strong. Uh, so let's say you do fall in love with what Baphomet's treating you and you're talking about here. Yeah. And you could join up with his cult. If you wish hey. to be superior to others, this is your spot, man. <laughs> Basically, so his cultists view others as nothing more than animals and vermin, things that are should be hunted and killed and slaughtered. A lot of narcissists, bigots are in here. Uh, you can even see greedy nobles who just want to you know play and mess with their vassals who aren't really good at being leaders. Like they like building mazes. Yeah, that's a must, a hundred percent. They put them underneath castles or whatever, wherever their meeting place is, they will put a large maze underneath it. 
and they will place their victims or sacrifices they capture, strip them of all their possessions, clothes, weapons, whatever, and just stalk them through it. They wake up here in the middle of the night in an endless maze and just hear this howling and this screaming coming behind them of this large horde of people coming to kill them and they have to try to get out and they never do. They get killed. See, that sounds really, really fucking cool. And if if I were to implement that in one of my games, I would really want to focus on the soundscape too. Oh, definitely. Just to make sure. Like, And if you're in person, probably like turning the lights off or something like mm-hmm. that. We'll, we'll this is why I say room. maybe not use Baphomet, but use his cultists. Yeah, that sounds really fucking cool. Like, I know my most of the players that I play as, like would probably not feel too great if they had their stuff taken away from them yeah. despite their curiosity. So it would probably, I, I, this would be tough for me to be in. Well, as a DM, this is a tough, if you want to do exactly what I just said, that's tough to do to your players because then it feels very railroady. Yeah. What you would have to do is have them fail a encounter with these cultists or with these cultists and have them quote unquote die. But instead of getting killed, they wake up in this maze with nothing <laughs> outward or that. Game? Yeah. Yes, yeah. And you, and like you said, play up the soundscape. Uh, put a time limit on it. If they hit 20 minutes or whatever inside this maze, then the cultists start attacking them. They've yeah. caught up. Boy. Yeah. Give them, give them some notifications, because if they're babbling on like I can tend to do <laughs> when I'm trying to plan stuff and uh-huh. encounters, <laughs> we'll just that, say that the 20 minutes are going to go by. I'll just say this, the sounds are getting louder and louder. Yeah, whatever this is, is getting closer. So, I mean, I know not every group is going to be able to defeat Baphomet himself, but what, what are some strategies to either combat the, the cultists themselves or even Baphomet if you fight him? Kill him. Quickly. Pass. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's looking at Baphomet, you know, him being a Minotaur. Minotaurs have these charge abilities, which Baphomet yeah. does. You don't want to give him a bill, uh, you know, room to utilize that because that's just like a free 16 damage and makes you get tossed and prone. So, okay. yeah, you, you don't want to give him that that space. So, is is Baphomet one of your favorite? Yeah, I like him. I like the cultist I like him a lot. See, I no, oh yeah, the cultist is the coolest part. I typically don't like big brutish guys, but he's he's got some brains. Oh yeah. Speaking of brains, Gosh. okay. The next guy has two of them. The beautiful. So, harken back to Chimera, do, do they think together? Well, it's the beautiful Demogorgon. Oh. The Prince of Demons. He has two heads. One's called Emil. I'm t- probably not pronouncing either of these correctly. Emil, and the other is Hathreda. God. <sighs> they are nasty. Uh, but this well, guy <laughs> rules the 88th layer of the abyss. This layer is known as the Gaping Maw. It is a vast continent covered in jungles and brine flats. Rising from the sea are two twin towers, each adorned with a fanged skull, which marks the fortress to his area, his domain, called Abyssum. Few can enter this place without succumbing to madness immediately. So Not, not good. <laughs> Read the aspects and aliases for this guy. Uh huh. Amon Ebor, Shio Sivash, and Limugugugun. <laughs> it that's L E E, M O O, right? G, G O O, G O O N. Seems like a lot of a lot of letters there. <laughs> it must be his native tongue or something. But yeah, we talked about this guy in a little bit. I think this is why we ended up deciding to go with this. Uh, for this episode, yeah. last week when we talked about Chimera, because apparently he didn't like how the animals of our surface world looked and was like, man, this is disgusting. So he like eats them up heads. And puts them together. And boom. Does he just like, well, I guess all demons like shaping the world to their desires, but I, I yeah. guess that's his shtick. Part of it. I mean, his so his goal at the very least uh, is goal is to empty the all the multiverse of creatures even the ones that follow him. This is the only way for Demogorgon to be at peace. To, he, just, he just wants to be by himself, basically. He wants to lock himself in his room and have, have no distractions. It's believed that if this were to happen, if his ideal world were to exist, 
then the two heads would fight to the death because they're now they have nothing to distract themselves between, I guess, and devour each other until nothing is left, leaving behind an endless void of space. Now, hold on. Uh-huh. So, I mean, this could be in anything. This is sure. just the Demogorgon in general. I don't, this, this seemed to be, it's 5e. But continuing with the trend, this guy doesn't seem like somebody that I'd want to date. He's <laughs> like a bit of a loner, but I'm seeing he's got some history. He's a little um, edgy. Demogorgon's romantic interests, courtesy of uh, ForgottenRealms.Phantom.com oh, no. <laughs> at the wiki, is that he uh, was interested or involved with the succubus Shami Amore and the oh. succubus queen Malkanthet. Hey, I don't blame him. Um, damn, he reaches high with yeah, those succubus arms. queen. But then, why would he be romantically interested in these people? Especially if he just wants to rid the world of everything, right? Right. Seems contrary to what is once the way. I mean, you know, it's if you live forever, you get distracted every so often. Yeah distractions trying to keep you from destroying the entire world and ridding of all just he just wants to rid it of all creatures yep live it all living things that exist Mm -hmm. yeah even his cultists and eventually himself apparently that makes sense because he's got two heads god that's so tragic yeah it is really sad i mean he's he is considered to be the mightiest of all the demon lords so this is this is the cream of the crop this is the strongest dude we're going to be covering today really yep he is kind of intense yeah, he, he is considered to be the, the, the mightiest of all. That's why, and I've talked about this uh, uh, a little bit later too, there's some of the other uh, demon princes have some issues with Demogorgon as well as Yinogu. They don't like either of these guys. I think okay, probably I because they're so strong. I want to see the stat lock for this guy. His stats are lower than... He is a CR 26 though. That's true. He, he probably Last does guy some, was 23. Oh my god, these abilities. You guys need to look uh-huh. at these. <laughs> Never mind. I don't want to fuck with him. Yeah. See, he's nasty. he seems scary. He's a bit nasty. All right. Let's learn so a you little did bit ask, more about this guy. Yeah, you did ask about these two heads. Uh, they do work together, but they do also compete together. They don't like each other, but they put up with each other to get you know get a means to an end, more or less. This leads Demogorgon being a very clever entity. Having two heads is better than one. But it also leads him to be very paranoid of everything. He's constantly worried that people are trying to, or, or other creatures are a potential threat to itself. It will meet every challenge with overwhelming odds, so there's no chance of failure. Damn. Yeah. Don't I think, think he'd be a good boss. Oh, yeah. I think, well, like it comes in a, down in a company. Yeah, it comes down to these heads just constantly bickering with each other and saying, you know, well. John seems pretty scary. Nah, John's John's nothing. Well, I don't know. John can do this. John can do that. John can do... Oh, okay, all right. Well, you, maybe you got some points, all right? And so they work together to figure out the best strategy to, to slaughter any thread that comes against them. God, I'm still stuck on that romantic interest thing, but this guy is... <laughs> so I can only assume that all these guys have a cult. Yeah, and we don't really talk about how he looks. So it's too big. Some depictions show kind of primal um apish type heads but there's always um two like tentacles for arms and each arm has two tentacles coming off of it with large kind of dragon draconic like feet the demogorgon is in stranger things uh no, yes and no uh it's a long story it, the demogorgon it's a way for the kids under to i mean they label all the the, into the creatures they fight as D&D creatures, so... Okay, yeah, good. And then they labeled this one incorrectly because it's nothing like that. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah. But I think... No, Ryan's f- right. Two big, like, primate... Uh, what are those things called? Not orangutans. I don't remember what they look like, but they're always kind of disp- depicted... Oh, I know what you like, mean. Yeah. Yeah, I can't I can't get the word for it, but... Oh, baboons? Got, baboons, yeah. They got, like, baboon-like yeah, they, faces. Yeah, yeah, I just think of baboon bo- booties. Booties, yeah. And they got, like, a reptilian dragon-like feet with serpentine tails some that kind of look devilish in nature but yeah. they, he is like i wouldn't want to see this guy especially knowing that he is probably prepared everything to fuck whatever uh, is uh, approaching him up because mm-hmm. you look at these guys and honestly i'm like okay they're big they're dumb they're demons they're hate filled but they're they're crafty oh they're very crafty and that's that's, that's spooky so, so if you 
if you fall in love mm-hmm. with this guy, just like with uh, with the beautiful Baphomet. Oh, that's going to be a troublesome relationship. Yeah, it's, you don't want that type of triangle. Uh, but this guy is, uh, the majority of his cultists and followers are other demons. Mainly him being, because he's the most powerful. If you're a demon and you're going to follow somebody, you want to follow the strongest dude in the world. That's this guy. The mere sight of this guy just transfixes demon. He's the uh, he's the Adonis of the Abyss world. Everyone just looks at the guy and falls in love. Stunning. He he speaks all languages. Yeah, and has telepathy. <laughs> so no matter who you are, where you are in the world, he can talk to you. He can get, he can reach out to you. He probably um, won't like you though. So there are, like, like I said, most of them being demons, there aren't many mortals that fall under his sway. But those that do, mainly do it because they see a copy of his symbol. His symbol is kind of like a, a Y, almost like one of the tentacles. You get a, it gets a little Lovecrafty in here because this symbol is crafted either by the Demogorgon himself or by one of his demon followers. And if an immortal is exposed to this, they almost immediately become an agent of Demogorgon and begin to lurk in the shadows and attack victims. And there is fear that, you know, you know being a scared, they're going to attack, get attacked by one of these cultists. But mainly the fear comes from the bodies of these dead people. If you discover the body, it's been mutilated and destroyed in such a way that it just terrifies you to the core. Okay. That's what the cultists do. That's about it. There is no order, no place of worship. They just go out and start brutalizing people. Kind of reminds me of Berserk. You don't know about that, do you? No, no, I don't. No. There's a curse mark or something sort of like that that is involved with all of the stuff that's going on in Berserk. Uh, it pulls all the demons towards the main character because he's got the mark on him. <sighs> uh, and they just want to fucking destroy him. Jeez. Yeah. Seems kind of similar. Yeah. So. I mean, okay, this guy's got, he's got, he doesn't have as much depth as our good boy before. No. He's strong, though. I wouldn't say he's my favorite. Okay. All he's right. really scary, though. He is very scary. You don't want to meet this guy in an alleyway. Do you think your players would ever run into this? Uh, How would you leave this into your campaign? Well, okay, so there is a 5e adventure module called Out of the Abyss. Which does not, as far as I recall, it's been a while since I read it, you don't actually venture into the abyss, but the demon lords, I don't think all of them, all the ones we're covering here, but a good handful of them are have entered into the Underdark. Because the Underdark gets a little messy with, there are some crossings in the abyss, between the Underdark and the abyss. Um, and they've crossed over into the abyss, or sorry, into the Underdark. And you do, the final boss, spoiler alert, uh, uh, um, of Out of the Abyss is the Demogorgon. Damn. Okay. So, yes. Don't and, know why he gets out there. Yeah, he gets out there. Uh, so, Out of the Abyss is the only time these guys have been brought up into any modules and stuff. But, of course, you could always have some cultists or some things, and the players go into the Abyss, or Demogorgon gets summoned. Who knows? You know, there's always ways if you really want to work this guy into your campaign. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it seems like if we're being honest here, and this is on a, on a dating app for D&D campaign stuff, mm-hmm. I'd be swiping left and right. This guy comes up. I read a little bit. I'm intrigued, but ultimately I swipe left because he's, he's a little straightforward. He is kind of a basic demon, honestly. Yeah. I mean, so if you do want to use any of these guys, make sure you go to Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes. And they do have, that's where the stat block is. They have lair actions and regional effects and the madness, all the stuff is all back there. So check it out. Let us move on to the next one because I need something more intriguing. Well, speaking of intrigue, we have mm. the beautiful... No, it's not. Okay, sorry. It's not the most beautiful guy, but this guy is very beautiful. Fraz Herb Lou. Try Spelled? saying that three times. <laughs> this for me? Fraz, F-R-A-Z, dash, yeah, so far. U-R-B, dash, L-U-U. Fraz Herb Lou. Fraz Lou. Uh, this is the Prince of Deception. Oh, he, he rules. looks cool. Well, the important factor about this guy is, uh, well, he rules the 176th layer of the abyss, known as Hollow's Heart. And Hollow's Heart appears to be a flat, colorless, and featureless expanse to the human eye, but 
that is apparently due to his magical illusions. And it probably looks like something much cooler. So Fraz is, I'm just, we're just going to call him Fraz because I'm on a first name, first dash basis with this guy. Uh, he can, can look like whatever shape or form is most pleasing to whoever he's talking to. So he can constantly change his form. As far as we're aware, his most basic form looks like a gargoyle with some little beard tufts coming down from it. Uh, a nice, nice long tail. I mean, he He's looks a like thick a thick boy. Yeah, he looks like a pretty buff standard gargoyle, but he can change his form to look like anything that will please the person across from him. His goals, there is no clear motive or goal really for this guy, as far as I could find. Um, he's very, he, he's constantly <laughs> deceiving people. Uh, he considers himself to be the smartest entity in all of the cosmos, everywhere. He's very, uh, very proud of himself, I guess. And he will constantly utter phrases and remarks about something that it seems to be almost like we're constantly moving towards an end. Like there is something out there that is out to destroy everything. And he knows what it is. Was, was this one of the demons you've mentioned that like fell from power? Yes. Yeah. And then came back. Mm-hmm. He did. Okay. He was captured right. by two random adventurers. Apparently. <laughs> that sounds weak. Uh, yeah, uh, well, maybe he wanted to get captured. Who knows? Either way, he made his way back. Point being, uh, it is unclear whether the, these phrases and remarks about something, you know, the end, the end times approaching is a way to deceive his followers and make them believe that he has all the answers, even if he doesn't, or if he actually does know about the end of the world that is approaching. Who knows? So... I mean, I like smart demons, you know? He's very smart. Okay, he's got he's got thirty two strength and intelligence. Uh and depending charisma. on which edition. In five E, yeah, he's got twenty six intelligence. Man, this one seems better. Just give him all the intelligence. All of it. Yeah. Plus he's eight modifier. Smartest. Apparently he's also declared all of the other demons as his enemy. Well, he does seem very undemon like. Am I wrong? Yeah. He doesn't seem... He seems more fiendish, honestly. Yeah, he's not about strength, though he just... Don't get me wrong, he is very strong. He's more about deceiving, which is very devil-like. And he seems to meddle in mortal affairs a bit. Mm-hmm. Which is also which very is... devil-like. And, uh, Frass, if you're out there, I mean no offense. I know demons and devils hate each other. I'm not, uh, you know. he, he apparently has a half-fiend child. Whoa. Yeah. Cute. Uh, whose name is Reli- Relig- Religon the Horned. Religon the Horned. Half half fiend son of Orc. He- wow. Okay. This we're going down a rabbit hole. You guys should. This guy's got some background. <laughs> well, they all got some. Like I said, we're not really going into crazy detail nah, on nah, these nah. guys because we'd be here all day for each single. We have a whole podcast dedicated to each dude. All right, then. They're okay. Cool. Tell me, does he does he have a cult? Of course he does. Of course he does. Give me, some, give me some info. So, yes, okay, so I, I may have been a little ahead of myself. It's yes and no, does he have a cult? A lot of his followers are tricked into following him. It's that very similar yeah, very similar to Hags in the fact that he will feed people lies and will enjoy bringing them the downfall of people who are otherwise considered to be good but will take advantage of their shortcomings and you know, real life, make this noble who believed to be this kind and caring dude will play up his vanity and bring him down until he has fallen and is nothing and is worshiping Fraz, even though Fraz probably doesn't look like Fraz and looks like probably this beautiful woman or whatever the heck. Um, there are also, on the other hand, there are illusionists and con artists who do worship Fraz and know what Fraz or blue is. And he does continue to re- give them rewards as long as they are continuously trying to bring about the downfall of all that is lawful and good. So that is where he is different than devils. He is not lawful whatsoever. Funny you say lawful and good because his alignment is chaotic and evil. Yeah. See? So kind of contrast to that. 
I, I, I see why you mentioned Baphomet first, because he seems the most fleshed out of these guys. But it's even in my campaign, B. I can see some usage for this guy in my campaign. For Fraz, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, Fraz, like if you think about a Lovecraftian entity, the, he, he is very much he like... He does um, seem Lovecraft. Well, he's like... Uh, oh, I, I had the, the, the name, like the Whisper in the Darkness. Um, near Lefethep, that's the name I'm Yeah, of. that guy. Ooh, he there's roams an, around and does there's stuff. An a, there's an anime. Or there's always an anime. <laughs> it's like the least Lovecraft, Lovecraft referencing anime that's ever out there. It's a harem anime. And it, there's just cute girls based off of it. Oh, sick. The name is hard to say, though. The things I never thought I wouldn't need it was Lovecraftian women. <laughs> I mean, they're pretty cute, man. <laughs> no, I'm I, I, I can't even. I can't even pronounce it. It's Hayori Nyaruko-san or something Whoa. like that. It's yeah, it's one, it's even hard for me to pronounce it. That's saying it's because it's Cthulhu. It's Lovecraft. You're not supposed to be able to say it. Yeah, Cthulhu for dog. Now I'm Sorry. mad that you said that. Why? Why are you mad? No, like oh, mad, mad, mad. Ha! <laughs> 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 See, Uh-ho. I've got the jokes. I don't know if Fraz would like jokes. Does our next guy, our next contestant? Speaking of dating, this guy, nah. If he he's gonna be playing games. Oh, he's playing a lot of you. games with you. He's gonna be real hot because he looks like your deepest desire. But man, he's gonna mess with you. Yeah, he, he he's not there to, to to love. He's there to constantly play with your emotions. So he's a pass. Let's move past him. My parents wouldn't like him in no, my D and D campaign. So let's keep going. So this guy, this next one, this is the man of your dreams. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. He oh, no. is Grazit, the Lord of Pleasure. Now, before you keep going, if I'm correct, was it the last guy? Yeah, so Fraz or Blue named all the demon lords as his enemy, in particular, huh? Grazit. Yeah, I probably would too if I was competing against the, this guy. All right, let's see what he looks Oh, he uh, is handsome. There you go. Look at him. Look He's at nine, this guy. Tall, dark, and feet. handsome. Uh-huh. Nine feet tall, man. Damn. He's the perfect figure of untamed desire, according to Mordenkainen. <laughs> oh, oh he's a Tanari? Mm. Oh. Now, it's interesting. So, before, uh, we never really covered the, the features of a lot of these guys too much, but this guy is important because... Every curve of his body, every little moment, everything you see about him is just supposed to be perfect and perfection and attraction. Okay, everything. From just whose point of view? Yours. It gets you going, man. It gets you moving. It oh, gets I see your, why you, your panties in a bunch. Oh man, I see why. I see why Erblu, because Erblu can look like anything, but he can't actually obtain it. Yeah, but this guy's I got see. it all. Now, all right. so he's got it all, but as Mordenkainen points out. There is a subtle wrongness that pervades through his beauty. As he has six fingers and six toes on each hand and foot. Um, so there's things... and for, So if you are a humanoid, you're going, whoa, who is this man walking towards me? You'll notice small things that just seem off, but it's not enough to detract you from his striking features. Hmm. So... What also makes this guy unique is he rules Azagrat, which is known as the Triple Realm. It spans over the 45th, the 46th, and the 47th layers of the Abyss. This makes him almost the most powerful demon prince. Almost, because I would say uh, Demogorgon's probably still the most powerful dude. But he's close. He definitely rules more than Demogorgon. You could also you could argue because he is, you know, so attractive that he just garners people to his will much easier than Demogorgon would. Demogorgon gets a lot of demons. This guy gets a lot of cultish followers. Yeah. I mean, so some claim he used to be an arch devil, possibly, who served from, as Modius. He does kind of look devilish. I could see that. I mean, from what I know about the Dark Prince of Pleasure is he, first of all, that's the name of my new album, uh, the, the, second of all, he won this realm, won Azagrat from another demon, another demon lord, 
and that okay. demon lord has been uh, you know just killed slaughtered by this guy so did he lead part of the blood war which is a war between apparently the devils and the demons he has happened? uh partaken within the blood war correct yeah hmm okay he seems yeah. cool what's what's the what's the catch though other than the multiple fingers and toes <laughs> Well, uh, so his goal in, in the universe is that all other creatures should only be allowed to exist if they give him pleasure. All who will be left in his ideal world are those that will love and worship him. Period. Uh, okay, so that's interesting. A little selfish. A little, Sounds like he's, he's very narcissistic, polygamous. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 100% polygamous, yeah. But Lots of orgies. Can't. You can't date other people, though. No, only he. Only can. him. Only he. Yeah, Again, he can see oh, whoever. Are there are any of these demon princes not toxic? Uh, it's funny you mention that. Uh, the next one is very toxic. Okay, I mean, I, mean, I wanted to look at Grazit's a little bit more. Yeah, we're not we're not done with the next with the, with Grazit, but just you know, getting you guys is excited. The next one's very toxic. Some sources claim that he was the creator of Vasharans, a breed of com- breed compared to humans as the Duro are to elves. Interesting. 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 Wiki is, the- is super filled with info. Yeah. Well, I mean, think of all the things that have been written in this universe. That is true. Uh, he is so a, his, he's an attractive boy. Yeah. His personality, he's very, he incites lust and uncontrollable urges in those that are around him. Makes sense. Um, and his his lust himself, he's very very lustful man, but it can be quelled immediately if he considers there to be a threat to his rule, and he will stop whatever orgy he is having oh to yeah, to figure out how best to protect himself and to f- kill whoever is threatening him. All right, so he he's got his priorities straight. Mm-hmm. He he protect as well as attack. Yeah, and the people that follow him are just seeking the most basics of pleasure. It's interesting because it mentioned that he gets more followers by the cultists will go out and depict different art pieces, whether they're poems, songs, uh, just straight up paintings, anything that encounters a depiction or depicts an encounter with the prince himself, with, with grass. The general public is absolutely disgusted by this. You know, they're, they're vulgar pieces, very obscene, but there will be the occasional individual who sees this, hears this, whatever it is, and is intrigued and wishes to learn more about this demon lord. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm really interested in his past devil live because at least if you're going off this fandom, I mean, his former homes, possibly the nine hells. Possibly. And he was, he used to be apparently an arch devil. He looks devilish. He does look devilish. Devilishly handsome. <laughs> he probably liked that joke. Graz, it's hit me up. He does have a very. He does have a lot of children, which is you know makes sense. Yeah. yeah have have you heard of a of Cambians? No. Hmm. So Cambians are um, an offspring of a fiend. Generally, they are succubi or incubuses. Incubi, sorry. <clears throat> and a humanoid. But the demon lord, Graz, as you know, he's not a succubus or an incubus. Well, I guess you could argue he's an incubus. But he has, a, you know, as I've mentioned, a fondness for orgies and procreating. So he has lots of his offspring floating around the world. The That's great. Yeah. More to go around. Mm-hmm. Lots of cambians. He's really he he does remind me of somebody out of Berserk though. <laughs> God, I need to read that actually. It's so and he insane. hates he hates the Demogorgon. I hate the Demogorgon because he believes the title Prince of Demons should be to him. No, he's princely. He's handsome. What Demogorgon? No, Graz. The- yeah, that's why he wants that title. But Demogorgon says it's his title. I give it to him. He's my second favorite now. Okay. Nothing yeah, first, to beat Baphomet. First one's yeah, but say first one's still Baphomet. Yeah, let's keep going down the line, my friend. Yeah, so the next one. Speaking of toxic, (laughs) pun intended, this is Jubilex. Jubilex. The Faceless Lord. 
He is a conglomeration of slime and ooze and nastiness with eyes all over it. Disgusting. He rules the 222nd layer of the abyss, known as the Slime Pits. Oh, he does look disgusting. Mm-hmm. Very, very fetid and uh, oozing sludge. It's the exact opposite of the last guy. But what makes him unique is he shares his lair with another demon prince, specifically the demon queen, Zugtamoy, who we will cover last because she is a Z. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It says he has a race. Uh, yeah, Tenali I mean. Again. Are those just like demon things? That he has a race? Yeah. What's his race? Maybe Tanari. Uh, maybe. T A N A R. Pashpa Tanari? Pashpa. Maybe he used to be a thing. Maybe. Maybe maybe he turned into this all consuming monster. I can see that. Oh, okay, like so Tanari is a subcategory of demons, apparently. Okay. Makes sense. Alright. Well let's 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 go. Tell me about this uh shapeless mindless monster. Sure. So his goal, well eh, does it specifically does does Jubilex specifically have a goal? Who knows? But it's believed that it has a, a desire to overrun the universe and to turn every realm into a copy of the slime pits, his you know, domain in the abyss, basically turning everything into an ooze infested wasteland. Okay. Cute. Fun. Now you're going to want to invite your friends to that. Now, I forgot to ask this about our last guy uh -huh. to implement him into your campaign, but this man here, I mean... What would you do? Like, how would you bring him in? Yeah. I think, again, it would come down to the cultists, which we'll get to. Um, but it's really the all oozes. So it's believed that Jubilex is the s single re entity responsible for various all the various oozes that exist. And it's believed, can, jumping off of that, that he sees and knows all that happens to these creatures. Hive mind, but like kind of their minds. He's just like yeah. big brother. You can just yeah, big brother. You can see what's going on. Okay, I got you. So uh -huh. he, but he's he's very basic though. Yeah, not many people want to follow this guy either because he's disgusting. Well, yeah, I wouldn't want to either. If, if you're a cultist and you follow this man, especially you're... over Grazd, come on. Right, Grazd has the shape and definition. This guy is just mm -hmm. blobby and gross. Maybe you're after personality, but this guy doesn't even have it. Yeah, uh, most people that follow him are incredibly delusional and very disturbed. They yeah, will continuously preach of a day when a tide of slime will swallow the world. The See? only reward they get out of all this is they believe that if they were to, if they worship Jubilex, then Jubilex will spare them on this day. Which Why was probably not that's true. delusional. Yeah, it is. Like I said, they're incredibly delusional. And he, he wouldn't even have told you this. No, 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 no. So this, you're just insane. Man. Yeah, the, the, a lot of the cultists are basically just the people that take care of the slimes. And, you know, crazy mages that just have a whole home of slimes. That's cute. Next time you're watching your slime anime, remember this. They're nasty <laughs> monsters. Terrible. There's plenty of those uh, as a late so that, I mean, that's... Literally, that's it. That's Jubilex. Sure, there's, right. there's, some, there's some more information out there if you're interested, but he is, as Braxton said, pretty basic and pretty, I mean, granted, most demons are pretty disgusting and wretched, but this guy takes it to a whole new level. I mean, the other guys we have, I'm sure they're messy and dirty, except for Grez, but yeah, kind of, yeah. the guys before, yeah. eh, they're, they're all right. Demogorgon, probably a little gross. Baphomet. Maybe a little smelly, but he, he makes up for it in other areas. I don't know. Jubilex is a whole whole other level, man. I'm not a fan of him. He's a giant eyeball-looking, mouth-filled slime that I wouldn't want to put any part of me in or onto. But the next guy, I think you will want something to do with, because he's, oh boy, Orcus, right, Orcus. The Prince of the Undead. Mm, oh, man. I don't know. I'm not big into the undead, my friend. I don't know. This guy is... If you haven't even heard of demon lords and princes, you've probably heard of Orcus. Yes, we've I've definitely heard of Orcus. Yeah, we've talked about Orcus before in the podcast on our Shadowfell episode. Uh, Kenneth, a lovely fella, mentioned him a few times. Uh, he's got a good bit of following within the Shadowfell, but this is his spot. The 113th layer of the abyss, known as Thanatos. Okay. It is a frigid and frozen waste filled 
with Undead. So this guy is a, you can kind of think of him as a big buff dude with a head of a, I don't know how I'd describe that, kind of like a, not really Minotaur-esque. It's a, like, kind of it's some sort of skull with large tusks coming out of it. Yeah, kind of Minotaur-esque. He's got a staff, the Staff of Orcus. It's uh, got a scary skull on the end of it, and it kind of looks like a pickaxe. And got giant f- uh, feathery wings that come out. Not feathery, uh, leathery wings, that's better. Uh, some depictions do have feathers and things on it, but it, all of them are scary with lots of skulls. So, yeah, on death, makes sense. Yeah. His basic goal is to end all life. And wants to replace all living beings with immortal undead creatures that will serve only him. Okay, well, all that will remain is okay. Is on life. That's it. Hey, is on life really anything different from from life? Uh, yeah. Uh, specifically, it's quiet. That's what Orcus yeah. wants. See, he says that he good. he prefers the stagnation uh, or prefers stagnation over anything else. So he basically just wants to sit around on the couch and do nothing. He views yes. life mm. as loud, crude, and maddening. I don't, I don't blame him. And, yeah. <laughs> and he says the universe can only know peace when the incessant hum of life is replaced with the quiet world of the dead. Now, you see, I kind of relate to Orcus here. I think this guy grew up in New York. Maybe. I kind of relate to him. Because, you know, sometimes it's just a little noisy outside. It's just and too I loud. Wanna, I just, I just want to be in my apartment and just do my own thing. Laze around, you know? Have a pile of undeath around me, maybe, perhaps. Well, let's give this band some headphones. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, undead kind of moan and groan. Wouldn't you yeah. hate that? They don't have to. Maybe not the ones he makes. Yeah, we'll see. His stat block's pretty cool, though. <laughs> he does some fun stuff. He needs to work out a little bit. Damn. He's got a little gut. He's got a little gut? He's got a little gut. Jesus. He flies too much. Those big wings he's got there, man. Oh my god. Yeah. He seems... Um, you know you're he's still strong. Him? I'm hating on Orcus him. here. I mean, it's fine. That The wand is strong, though. I want yes, the, the wand. The wand of Orcus is very strong. Would you ever give it to your player? If they killed him? I mean, if they kill him, yeah, at that point, campaign's over anyway, right? <laughs> this guy's CR20. This is, this is like an in-game boss. This is it. Yeah, what do you... God, we need to talk about level 20 at some point after we've had the experience. <laughs> if we ever get there, yeah, it'll take forever. It will take forever. I mean, we're like nine right now. You just have to co- continuously up the stakes, and Orcus is definitely upping the stakes. Orcus is a cool boy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like culminating everything into finding a demon prince like shouldn't be the boss fight. Yeah. But it should be getting there. So, uh, the, the people that follow this guy, though, yeah, they, they view the gods as cruel and unjust. They are upset at the current balance of life and believe that we are just succumbing to the will of the gods. They believe with Orcus that there is a promise of release from this pain with this constant, you know, turning of the wheel. And there yeah. is no strings attached, apparently. Because uh, they just become undead, and that's it. I mean... I feel like it's a string attached, though, right? Doesn't he want to control them? Maybe he doesn't tell them this. I don't know. It's To be fair, the people who are who fall into this trap have recently lost a loved one. You know, they have, they're hit with some sort of grief. Something something has happened in their life, and they are now have nowhere else to turn. At least they don't feel like it to Orcus. Yeah, there, there's these madness of Orcus things that I'm seeing mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. And they're all pretty much, I am sad yep. and want to die mm-hmm. or see the weak suffer. So he is depression incarnate. These, yeah, these these madness things could work pretty well for any like pseudo villain or like not main villain, but like maybe a humanoid or somebody more similar to yeah. who your players are. These are very villainy things like I am compelled to make the weak suffer like that's sort of, That's a really yeah. common thing, you know? Yeah, well, to, so if you were to join up with Orcus, you, you have to be willing to become undead. That's it. There is no other way to be a cultist of this guy. Is he undead? I mean, he's a demon, so no. 
That's a, that's kind of hypocritical. Wouldn't want to <laughs> date this guy. Yeah, but he's he's in charge of everything, so he doesn't care. I don't know, he seemed kind of like the type of guy that would post on his social media or on his dating site that he would say, yeah, probably like sit inside watching Friends maybe, but if only all the people in the show were dead, you know, just want a lazy day <laughs> on the couch. Yeah. That sort of guy. I can see that. It's kind of okay at first, but then you find out he's got some, he's a little, he's a little too sad all the time. He he doesn't like hearing you talk because you're noisy and turns you undead. He's got no motivation. Yeah. I'm going to have to pass on this guy too. <laughs> well, if you have, so let's say you decide to become a cultist by him, you decide to date him, et cetera. And then it's just a little too sad, a little too broody for you. You know what? I have second thoughts. I'm going to leave. Well, sorry. If you have a second thought, then you are condemned to the, your soul specifically is condemned to the outer planes to scream in any, any eternal torment forever while your body just becomes animated undead and you have no will of your own anymore. That's great. So don't take We're all basically guy. undead anyways. Damn. Orcus already leads. He seems yeah. like Prime Demon, though. Like, basic. Oh, definitely. As well as... I mean, there are some... Like, the Graz... He's, he's a unique guy. Uh-huh. Baphomet. He's he's basic demon. He's got some brains. Uh, none of these guys are really impressing me, except for Graz... Like him. <laughs> well... Baphomet's cool, but, you know. How about this guy? You've been impressed by him in the past. You know good. He's all right. No, 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 those are dumb. What? It's the beast of butchery himself, man. He rules the 422nd layer of the abyss, known as the Death Dells or the Seeping Woods, which is an endless hunting ground of barren hills and ravines, populated by, you guessed it, gnolls, ghouls, and hyenas. And they constantly just hunt things and kill things and eat them. So. So, see, who rules the 420th layer? Uh, put me on the spot here. You want to find out? Will there be an answer? Possibly. 400, which one? 420. No, no 420. There's 421. See, that's just lame. Missed opportunity. Let's get back to Yinogu. We already learned a bunch about this boy. Yeah, so if you're super interested... If you're super interested in this guy, go look to our Knowles episode from a while ago. Uh, but a basic covering of him, he's, he looks like a big Knoll. A uh, big surprise. Weak. He's only challenge rating 13. What? He, he is? Yeah. No, he's Sierra 24. Oh, I'm looking on a wrong thing, I guess, then. Well, you must be. You're probably looking at an older edition. Maybe. Um. So he is yeah, the, the Beast of Butchery. His goal, he wishes the multiverse to become nothing but a brutal fight between his followers, in which he eventually rises as the final victor. Cool, he, uh, he wants to just show that he can kill everybody, uh, be original. He has an unbelievable bloodlust that rages across the abyss, slaughters everything in his path. Only demons that join this bloodlust and slaughter fest are spared from his continuous murder rampage. And... You also guessed it. His cult is basically just gnolls. That's it. A lot of these guys, Ryan, their goals kind of align. Like turning everybody into undead. Uh Uh-huh. Probably wouldn't care if they all were gone anyways. Yinogu gets to kill them all. Demogorgon's happy because they're all dead. The problem being, though, they all want to be the last dude alive. See, that's where the problem happens. But they can at least work together until that point. And then they just fight each other? Yeah. That, that'd be a sick ending to like some cool anime or something. Yeah, they all would. work together, then a gigantic fight for the end. Orcas versus Yinogu versus Grazid versus <sighs> Fraz versus Demogorgon. Fast I mean, I don't think Grazid would win. No, definitely I'm pretty not. sure he'd be out, but who do you think would... Probably <laughs> Demogorgon or... I think the Baphomet Demogorgon... if he got to do the maze, but... No, I think Demogorgon or Yinogu. Maybe Orcus. Maybe. If Orcus could turn them into undead. That'd be cool. Which I think they're probably immune to it. Yeah. So we'll see. They I mean, fail. Uh, since we already talked about Yinogu and all his yeah, we don't need to cover too much. Ma, like, do we have anybody else? Is that it? 
No, there's one final. One final. Have you noticed one thing? What, what? do all these guys share in common? They're demons. Okay. Well, they're all dudes. They're all guys. Okay. Yeah, I had that question earlier on. Except for it. the final lady. She hot. Oh, she's pretty stinky. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, give, give me that name. Zug Tamoy. We talked about her earlier briefly. She shares the, t- the 222nd layer of the abyss with Jubilex. She is the demon queen of Fungi. Cool. Though. So he's, she's got lots of parties because there's lots of fun guys there. <laughs> she looks so cool. Really scary, though. Yeah. So her goal is, and this is very cool, very unique. I love it. Her goal is to meld all living creatures into one giant organism. And then she herself will rule that one organism herself. So she basically just wants everyone to rule her. It's kind of odd, I guess. That's really creepy. Yeah. She's fungus, man. Fungus. See, oh, I see it now. Mm -hmm. They they also designed her to kind of look like a really, really gross. Um, yeah, never mind. <laughs> uh, she is believed to be the originator of all fungi and molds. Makes sense. And her cultist. So this is where it also gets interesting. Her cultist. She doesn't have many willing followers. Almost all of the mortals that follow her have been infected Makes with sense. demonic spores and have nowhere else to turn. The, the spores will devour their brain, allowing them to continually spread the fungi like a plague, but will take the will away to revolt against Sugtamoy, leaving them just thralls, mindless thralls, and do, to do nothing but spread the good word of Sugtamoy around. Wouldn't she just absorb them, though? Like Eventually, probably. That's what she would do. I want to see your stats, because... You know, she is really intriguing. I like this one. She is slightly weaker than the others. <sighs> Damn. I mean, that's that's unfortunate. But she does have mind control spores in her stat block. Imagine getting affected like that. by that as a player. No, thank you. I would be big sad. Mm-hmm. There's like DC no 19. That's actually blocks. pretty low. DC 19 with some saving throw. I guess at the level you'd be fighting her, probably. Yeah. Does she interact with the other demon people much at all? Well, considering she has a, a plane of existence, plane of the abyss just with Jubilex, yeah, she encounters him quite a bit. And according to most sources, they do not enjoy each other. So they I, kind I of, would they kind of, so. well, they kind of contrary ideas. Him being a big ooze that wants to just you know ooze up the place, and she wants to have fungus everywhere. They can share some sort of overlap, but eventually there's gonna be some button heads. Yeah, there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a butt head in there. Yeah, uh, if the slime boy had a butt, but I don't I think don't, he does. I, yeah, I, I'd rather I I would want Zugtamoy to win. I'm not a big Jubilex fan. Yeah, Zugtamoy's a bit cooler. I'm, I'm I mean, all Zug. in all, hearing about these boys and girl, who's your favorite? My favorite, I think, would have to be Baphomet. I agree. Yeah. Just the maze aspect sounds super cool and creepy to use in a campaign. I, I think he'd be the most, he seems to be the most fleshed out and fun to use. Um, mm-hmm. Between uh, our handsome princely boy and the fun guy, girl, yeah. fun girl, she's a fun girl. I think she's about fun. Ty for me. Okay. Because I think her, her stuff could be really fucking creepy. Oh, definitely. And I like that. It's Everybody also very is just Lovecraftian in a way. Yeah, and then third would be um, I, I've already forgotten all their names, man. They need to, we need to get shortened names for them. But the deceptive guy. Hey, that's uh, that's it's Fraz. Yeah, he'd be my third. Fraz or Blue? Fuck. You know who's last? Well, uh, Jubilex is b- above him. Probably not. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> I don't know where You know who would be. He's a, he's a good boy, but I don't know. He needs to broaden his scope, Re- readjust his values. His knolls disgusting. Well, he is basically just one big knoll. What came Not first, the Inogu or the knoll? I'm pretty sure he birthed out the knolls. Damn. 
So maybe, him. Maybe he's a whammon. Maybe. <laughs> now I'm pretty sure it says he's masculine for his yeah. for his gender or whatever it says. I don't know enough about that. Mm, I know. But these these demon boys, I mean really Baphomet, I would say, is the penultimate one if you're throwing them into your campaign. If you were like, man, I want to put some demon guy at the end of my campaign when my players get to this level, I would say do Baphomet. Yeah. At the very least, use the uh, use the cultists. Uh, the cultists are good. They're the best part. Yeah. That's what that's what makes it interact with the world. And there specifically are specifically for mine, I don't know. We'll see. So if you want to get really in depth with some of these guys, specifically just the Demogorgon, Grazit, Jubilex, Orcus, and Yinogu. Pick up the Book of Vile Darkness, which is a, I want to say a fourth, maybe third edition book. And they go in much more detail on a lot of these guys. And there is even older edition stuff and other, you know, third party stuff that will cover these layers in a lot more detail. If you really want to use them, like there's cities and places and a lot of these uh, areas that we definitely did not have time to cover today. Do living humans even really live in the abyss? Uh, not out of their own free will, no. There's, I mean, they can come, especially if they're cultists of, like, Grazids and stuff, and just hang out for lots of crazy orgies, but there's... Are there civilizations? Cities? Uh, towns? I mean, c- cities and towns for these guys and for their followers, but not just for, like, any average Joe that wants to come hang out, no. Okay. All right. I the Abyss is not a, really for that. That's demons in a nutshell for you. Demon princes, that is. Demon princes. Not to be yeah. confused with Daedric princes. No, 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 no. Skyrim. Gotta get no, there. I haven't talked about it in a while. I had the urge. I saw it. somebody's modded Skyrim. Oh, no. For like, for just an image. And I went, huh. Maybe. And then I went, nope, stop. <laughs> I mean, there are some, like, Ultimate Skyrim installed itself now. So, if you really just want that, then go for it. Yeah, but it's just not. Yeah, it's you too, want just, too many things, just man. Just your liking. It's too many things. It's yeah, just I don't not blame right. you. Maybe I should become a demon prince, and my goal is just to make Skyrim modded perfectly. Sure. That's a very <laughs> evil, evil goal. It is evil. The only thing, it's the way I want it, and nobody else gets to choose. They're all my NPCs. Damn. That's it. That's but I guess, scary. you know, if, if you like learning about demons or want to learn more about possibly devils at some point, which I think would be an even messier topic, because generally <laughs> they got some more stuff going on. Yeah. Give us give us a little little follow at uh Dungeon Crawl Pod. Did I mess that up already? No, at no. Dungeon Crawl Pod. At Dungeon Crawl Pod on social media. I, I had a brain toot this time. But if you're Twitter looking Instagram. for email communication, it's mm-hmm. the Dungeon Crawl Pod at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Give us we a also, review on uh, iTunes, five stars, oh, preferably. I just did that. What? <laughs> it's okay. I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> it's fine. But we also have a Discord that we, we use to talk with our friends for the most part. But we, uh, Ryan pointed out earlier that we've got a new friend in there. He's a dumb, dumb face. That's kind of mean to say, isn't it? No, literally, his username is Dumb Dumb Face, and oh. it's a like a cup with some juice in it, and a gun shooting in its mouth, and rainbow popping out the head. Oh, that's dark. Maybe he'll say something at some point. Hello, yeah. hope you. Uh, uh, if you're listening, Dumb Dumb Face, hi. Thanks for popping in. in. Thank you for thank you for joining. Much appreciate. And thank that, you all the link for joining. For the Discord will be in the episode description. Yeah, thank you all for joining and listening. And our Absolutely. incessant waffling about demon princes. <laughs> He's been Ryan. He's been Braxton. Thank you. Don't let these demon but, princes get you down. Find no, that don't. right person for you. Find that love for you. If it's not demons, maybe it's tells. You have to shop around for a bit. Don't, don't lose hope. Take care.